geachte aanwezigen, dames. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome to Arnhem at the Institute for Physical Safety at the Fire Safety and Science Congress. We're very pleased to be organizing this eighth in the series. We're especially proud because this year, in addition to welcoming you, we have 300 guests at this site. You'll see them here as well as around viewing this via closed caption. And we just heard that thanks to the live streaming technology, people in other countries can view this as well. I know that both Ukraine and Belarus are able to view this. So in that respect, bienvenue, herzlich willkommen. Welcome to the 8th Fire Safety and Science Congress. Good morning. This is an ambitious effort, but over the years we've noticed that the number of participants is increasing that takes an interest in this type of knowledge exchange, and we welcome this. We also support improved disclosure of our reports. We're starting to publish them in English, and that's the language of exchange for dispatch centers in different countries, because otherwise it remains an exchange within your own backyard, and the proof of the pudding is in developing the trade across borders. So once again, this Congress is called Fire Safety and Science to establish the link between fire prevention safety and the science of how we can improve upon this trade and enhance it. So we have a lot of people in this auditorium and in the area around the auditorium viewing this. This fine program has come about thanks to support from uh, the laboratories as well as Effectus and TU Eindhoven. The subsequent program that will be introduced by Mr. Chris Adiers, the uh, fire chief and chairman of the uh, fire department in Antwerp. And our expectations are high because this bridges knowledge on the one hand, that's why we're here at the uh, Institute of Physical Safety for the fire department and disaster prevention in the Netherlands with sharing knowledge as far as the Institute is concerned, in 2015, we've had uh, a fine, fascinating year. We've conducted a lot of research and acquired extensive knowledge. We just completed the seventh investigation on uh, fatal home fires. This might be highlighted later on in the program. That's another series of studies to examine the cause of home fires, especially fatal home fires. And by comparing them systematically year after year, we scrutinize the causes of those fires and how effective smoke detectors are. What happens when we apply smoke detectors in homes? And we also examine how homes are used. Do we distinguish between the elderly and the younger generation and the um, aging demographics in our country and elsewhere require a different approach to fire safety. In this study, we're identifying elements that that cover um, skill and improve knowledge among uh, caregivers and administrators as well as in the fire department. And we're proud of this program because we'll be uh, addressing all different aspects in fire prevention. We hope that these days will inspire you and enlighten you, and that thanks to all you've learned, you'll uh, leave with uh, new vigor and interest in expanding the horizons of this profession. I hope you'll have a wonderful day, and I'm pleased to hand you over to Chris Adiers, who will chair these two days. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Good morning. 
friends of science and friends of fire prevention. Welcome to the eighth Fire Safety and Science Congress here in Arnhem. This is the Congress of that uh, fire prevention science. In fact, Ellie van Stream, the chief fire officer in Amsterdam, was supposed to be here, but everybody knows that uh, Ellie van Stream had an accident and has had some uh, quite serious um, health impacts. So he's insufficiently recovered to stand before you, but I know that um, he's watching us uh, via live stream at home. I hope that Ailey will um, recover quickly. Please be aware for me and for many of the people in the Netherlands, Ailey incarnates creative, investigative uh, um, research and thought. Those are three strategic pillars for advancing in an organization and three strategic principles for a sustainable organization. I was amazed, but also, to be honest, flattered that René Hagen called upon me to replace Eli, and I was pleased to accept this won't be an easy task to replace Eli, but I'm confident that I'll rise to the challenge. I wondered how René Hagen uh, thought of me, that, that is, uh, thought all the way into Flanders, and when I look around the uh, auditorium, I'm seeing some answers to my question. When I look at the list of participants, and I've seen very little interaction, but I saw two or three um, co-workers from Flanders. So we have some, we're connecting with the rest of the world in Europe, but we have a long way to go. And as a fellow chief fire officer in the city and harbor, Fire Department of Antwerp and Chairman of the uh, Fire Association for Flanders, which abuts the Netherlands as well as at the European Federation for Fire Safety. I'm welcoming this opportunity to uh, establish a bridge between the, the Fire Department on the one hand and the academic perspective and input that we need. Second, the interaction between the academia and the fire departments is presently imbalanced. If I look around the auditorium, I see that the fire department predominates and there's a, a small presence from academia. And But the fire department needs a boost because not everybody is convinced that if we want to respect ourselves, we absolutely need to seek out and support fundamental applied science. And if we want to think of ourselves as an intelligent organization, we have to behave accordingly. Moreover, the fire department in the academically related fire department circle is dominated by men, as is the fire department. It almost seems as if we're fledgling scientists in the 1950s and 60s in, in Flanders. There was a word, um, there was a term youth and science before we thought of the term emancipation. And perhaps Rene could have approached a, a Flemish fire woman to chair this uh, gathering, but that would have been quite difficult. And I'm sad to observe this, but look at the list of uh, speakers and the list of nominees in the graduation papers. It's clear that that imbalance is being corrected. And we see increasing excellence in uh, women in fire safety. That's a wonderful observation to share with you. So the first message is that the fire departments and science can connect here, and this will be a joint venture in fire and safety science. We need to bear three things in mind. We need to open up the frontiers to each other and be receptive, and we need to seek out a balance, and we need to reinforce the interaction between the two. And I mentioned youth in science. Around the turn of the century, this resurfaced on Flemish radio and television called the VRT. And we clustered the questions in a book and in the preface. We saw that Jan van der Bulk of the Uni University of Louvain explains the sleeper effect. And the sleeper effect means that 
if you've uh, got some hearsay or you've uh, seen or read something, the content sticks in your mind, but the source doesn't. And the background and essence and core of the story is never clear to everybody. It uh, floats around and slumbers and smolders in your head, but the origin is not clear. And that's still so to this day. We read this in fire and fire prevention. We heard this from a coworker. We've seen National Geographics on TV. More recently, we Googled and posted on Facebook and so on and so forth. So often it's not about the right information or scientifically uh, grounded information. Often it's about uh, stories that are handed down and half-truths and knowledges from the natives of our experience. Unmistakably, the fire department is dealing with the sleeper effect, and it doesn't keep us awake at night, and that's not good. It's high time to wake up, and when looking at the perspective of academia and scientists and engineers among us, it's essential that we wake up your essential partners to help encourage this awakening. That's my second message to you. When we're talking about research, innovation, and science. The fire department may not be your first port of call. Yet, you, well, logically, we prefer to uh, operate with circumscribed procedures based on proven technology. And it might not be such a bad thing to take a conservative approach because we work for people and we don't want accidents and we don't want misinterpretations. So we're not an organization that can rely on trial and error and test at the accident scene. We do have to realize that stagnation means regression and with our present knowledge we won't be able to manage. We need to assimilate research and we need the uh, the tens of thousands of uh, firefighters in Belgium and the Netherlands to convey this acquisition of knowledge and we need to support future research to the new technology and evolutions and challenges and we need to group them to seek out solutions together. This is a new perspective in which we see a challenge for both parties. I did my research. I studied to be an architect, and I had a conversation with Leo Zhao. I was here when this building was uh, under construction. I don't remember clearly, but that was my first connection with the fire department. And then I started working for the fire department. It's not uh, um, a family tradition. I wasn't predestined to join the fire department, but there were a few indications. In my final years in college, I had to specialize, and I, I'm not exactly sure why I did it, but I opted for fire and explosion safety. And when I think back about the courses I took then, then quite honestly, I have to admit that you could hardly call that uh, academic. Basically, fire science was just getting off the ground. That was 35 years ago in the late 1970s, and we knew very little about uh, fire safety science. Three decades later, we're advancing very rapidly, and the landscape has changed. Basically, uh, fire safety and science are reaching out to each other. And this is the challenge that we can meet, and that creates opportunities as well. In preceding conversations with Rene, I was surprised to note that in Flanders, you can take a master's program um, in fire safety engineering. In the Netherlands, it's a postgraduate program. But in Belgium, we don't have a fire academy. We have a knowledge center that was uh, established in 2008 and is presently fighting for its survival. So at this time, this is the perfect opportunity to examine the opportunities between the Netherlands and Flanders to make the message more consistent. 
there's no perfect match. So if we do want to advance, we'll have to uh, do our best and work to achieve that. Now, fire protection, fire safety, engineering are all at, at the front office. They're difficult to transfer to the back office. The fire department is back office work focused on repression and is difficult to advance to the front. So there are two different positions that need to coincide, and at a certain point, they'll need to uh, interact. They'll have to meet. The core message is that one it needs to uh, move backward, the other needs to move forward, and the two need to meet. And we can't do that entirely based on scientific or pragmatic approaches. We need to take a pragmatic, a pracademic, pragmatic and academic, so a pracademic approach by uh, taking the best of both and finding an, a science that we can apply. We need to evolve in that direction. We've relied on our experience for far too long. And we thought that that would be good craftsmanship. I'm aware that this is not the right attitude and we need to discard that. I'm delighted that the Institute of, Fire Sa of um, Physical Safety is hosting this uh, Eighth Congress. And I'm delighted that, um, what, that we're reaping the benefits of what we planted. There's expansion and broadening. And there's more than just Congresses. We can sense the dynamics. And I'm grateful that the IFV is um, the messenger of that knowledge development. We've also mentioned UL to support the American research laboratories for firefighter safety and fire safety in general. They've uh, made this dazzling program today possible for everybody present. I'm delighted that Robin Zevotek from UL is present here, and we'll hear Robin today and tomorrow. He'll deliver a presentation, and I'm grateful to UL and IFV for making this possible. Those are my three messages. If we can transition them to today's program, that's what we plan to do today and tomorrow. We're going to kick off with the program, but I've got a few general announcements. The first thing is please switch off your cell phones because they disturb the speakers and the technology that we're using here. So we have to keep doing that too. All presentations will be made available on the website. So you don't have to ask separately, can, can I have this one or can I have that one? You'll get everything. Three, the video streaming is in progress. It's live. So the students in adjacent rooms and at a distance are viewing the video stream, which will be stored for later on. Please note that we have a Twitter account. That's FS. FSX Congress 2015 so that we can share our opinions. Please participate. It will help dissemination and it will help our setup to disclose this to the world. And finally, I'm thinking about uh, our internal needs. We have some breaks. I mentioned that there were 300 uh, people in the building. So we have lunch on two levels, both one flight up in a, at this level. So try to um, spread out so that uh, we won't uh, clog up or uh, run out of time. And of course, I have to give you safety instructions as well. Uh, to your left and right and front and in back are emergency exits. The meeting point is in front where you parked your car at the um, flagpoles and the um, Occupational Safety Associates from this institute will guide you. 